guess we can start? Yep, we're good. We got a visitor, so man, you're up. No, I'm just I'm all listening about the broadband thing. No. Oh. Yeah. I won't extend the meeting at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jonathan, you can go. If you the only know. thing I have Dave, I'm sorry I didn't get to your comparison sheet. Mm -hmm. but I think we'll let's, let's bring it up and then I think and it's then we'll better that. to dive into it when everybody's here. Perfect. So at the it was the last meeting, um, there was some discussion about vacation time of our employees and whether that uh, matches other municipalities in our region. Um, the board wanted me to look at different municipalities, so I did some research on St. Albans Town and Highgate. Um, and just found, went and looked at their personnel policy. And go up to the gates. Help me do. This is St. Albans Town. Um, and so what I'll do for the next meeting, and I'll add it to the agenda, is I'll develop a comparison sheet between the three towers in Albans Town and Highgate, so you can just look at a comparison um, and see if we want to make changes to our personnel. I um, just wanted to provide you some information um, to read before the next meeting. Yep. Um, but are there any questions? No. I only printed out the kind of the, the vacation piece of their personnel policy just to kind of do a compare and contrast. That's, that's all I have. Um, we all know South Road is closed. Um, the highway department is working um, on that culvert. The culvert comes Wednesday, um, but everything is working on schedule and on time and it's, they're doing a very good job. That's all I have. So then the sidewalk we got sidewalks and communication right? So nothing on the sidewalk, um, except for, so it'll be done in two weeks. The project, um, even with the changes to the reference, is still looking on budget. Um, there were certain line items that they didn't use that, that just allowed us to stay on budget. Um, so they have a couple weeks left, and then that project will be wrapped up. Looks nice. So it I was, never thought they, they I'd say that. They've done a really I great job. The stupidest idea ever, but. It does. Yeah, I mean, it looks nice. It's just because it looks good doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. How much did it cost the town? Huh? How much did it cost the town? The town or the project total cost? The town. So it's about $80,000. The town paid for it. Correct. Yep. The total project cost was over half a million. Yeah. Which you paid for anyway. Right. Out of a different pot. Yeah. yeah. But there were some grant funds in there, wasn't there? There is, yep. It was funded 90%, um, and then, but there was some work on minor drive that was not participating in the funding, uh, but we're gonna end up paving that road as the result of the project. Um, but yeah, it was 90% grant funded. That's all I have on sidewalks. Any other questions? What do people think about? Like, the, what do you think not at the moment, no. No. I mean, I've heard from the librarian. Um, she's really happy that the library is now being able to be connected to um, other places, which is really great. Um, but as far as people using it or landowners, I haven't heard anything yet. I think it's still too a little too soon. I think you know yeah. there's still a lot of construction going on, so I don't know if people are using them yet. Right. Um, but once they're done, I'll be curious to see. Um, Especially for the school kids. Yeah. You want to try? This. this yeah sorry this piece right here this doesn't stay on there no but if you just twist it one time and then put it over here it stays up okay it's annoying otherwise that's all i have on sidewalks unless there's any questions any questions so, so i mean as as the the invoices are coming in we're submitting for reimbursements and so we're able to keep our that cash flow moving um but it's, yeah, we're looking under budget, so it's great. So then we'll go on to the Communication mm -hmm. Union District. <coughs> so I guess I'll, I'll speak to this one. Um, at the last meeting, the select board was provided a memo 
um, by um, the executive director of our regional planning commission, uh, which is Northwest Regional Planning, uh, saying that um, they were they were helping to stand up a communications union district. Um, normally, this can only happen at town meeting day, but due to the whole COVID-19 um, and legislature and grant funding, um, they were able to stand up. Ah! Bless you. Um, at, a, at a different time of year, other than when they typically do. Um, so it took uh, two or more municipalities to originally say, yes, we're going to do this in order for the organization to be formed. Um, Montgomery, Fairfax, and Enosburg were the first three to stand that up. Um, Georgia has since joined um, Baker, Berkshire, and Bakersfield, and us are considering it. Um, so this is just something that um, you know, Tom had mentioned maybe there'll be um, payments down the road, but at least for right now, there's no cost associated with it. So you're not committed to it financially at this point, <coughs> if you agree to this? At this point, no. And um, you can, if you write through this, you can get out of it if you don't want it, if you yeah. don't want it. There's no direct cost to the taxpayer or municipality. A CUD may ask a municipality to provide space for communications plant used to store fiber optic cable, electronics, or other um, equipment. Membership poses no financial risk to a municipality or to individual taxpayers. So this is looking at putting fiber optic in Fairfield? It's looking at it, yes. Yep. Fiber optic broadband expansion. Correct. You know, I think even, uh, uh, um, enable communities to have representation. Enable communications to have representation and affect decisions of the district, meaning planning, contracting, building, and managing infrastructure that will provide high-speed internet services. <coughs> I guess I'll pass around. These are three different letters. Um, that I received um, in support of Fairfield joining. Obviously we have a member of the public here as well. What are the drawbacks? I personally don't see any at uh, this time. You know, especially since it's it's, it's a no cost benefit. Um, you know, right now there's, there's no they don't have any funding to do anything with it. But I think that'll come as this organization gets moving and, and starts to progress. We're in the very early stages of it. And so the benefits of doing this is that you could, I'll say, buy in bulk. Correct. Yeah. I mean, we're, we have a seat at that table to then help our county um, in this region um, better serve our residents and visitors. Here's a copy of the memo. You have a copy of the memo? Yeah. <coughs> and, this, and this is kind of the formality, too, of, of what would happen tonight if there were to be join. And this explains that you, know, you would take a vote, um, you would choose a represent representative, um, and then two alternates. Is there anyone expressed interest in being a member? As far as a representative, no, I have not heard of anyone. I know the other um, municipalities, it's, it's a, been a staff member so far um, of the municipality to be that representative. Um, I know Fairfax is their county manager. Um, I'm not sure who the other two are. But I would say it should, probably should either be a select board member or, or a staff member to begin with, at least for the representative. So is that something you'd be interested in? It would be fine for doing that. The meetings right now are at 4.30 p.m. on Wednesdays, and I currently don't have a conflict, so. Is there any other comment or you want to take a vote on that? I'd make a motion we start with it. We've got nothing to lose at this point. And I'll second it. Okay. All of you. Favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
You want to appoint Jonathan? Yep. 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 Um, any alternates? You don't have busy days, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a volunteer. And you could probably. Yeah, I see you're trying to be leader. silent over there. <laughs> <laughs> Bums out and expresses interest. I mean, as yeah. yeah. Now it's just I had somebody that may be one of these people that were in favor of their memo. Can I put in the minutes? We're looking for alternates. Sure. sure. Yeah. Two alternates. Yep. Yeah. I don't I didn't apparently copy who it came from. I just copied the message. Thank you. And then what I can do is the meeting minutes um, from the organization I'll provide to this board at their meeting so you can see the, the updates of what's going on. Good. Okay. So then we set the tax rate. Perfect. So these Pass these around. These are the education rates. Yep. Have just this one. What? Just this one. Yes. I can print you out a copy though. And then, so you plug. What is it? I guess it should be. I can print you. Gavin, tell me what it is. Non-homestead rate. <clears throat> 181.62 and the homestead tax rate 1.6290. Thank you. How much is that up from last year? I have to look. It's in my office on the wall, but I'm not sure. Um, so what we do in, in the Numeric Grand List program, once the listers have the grand list set, um, we then enter those two numbers into the system and these two numbers. So the total general fund budget that the town passed at town meeting day, which is $1,205,640. And then you enter in the local agreement rate, which is $6,587.74. What's that? That is the local agreement rate. What's that mean? It's all the veteran exemptions. So it takes those into consideration as it develops the rate. So you have to add that to the budget? Correct. And what that, once all those numbers are added, it gives us a town tax rate of 0 0.6675. 0 0.6675. Six six seven five and last year's was 0.65 something, so it did go up a little bit, but not not much at all. So, what'd you say is going to be Jonathan? Zero point six six seven five is the town tax rate. And yeah, last year was zero point six five something, and then the year before was 0.64 or something. Um, so it's gone up a, a little bit every year, which but that makes sense. Um, but it was a very, very slight increase. <laughs> so we need to approve those four, three numbers, right? Or just the six, zero six? Just your town tax rate. Yep, so your, your education rates are approved by the district, or set by the district, and then you approve your town tax rate. You have a motion to approve the tax rate? Zero six six seven five. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Second. I don't know if I'm not sure. Yes. All those in favor? I everybody's a comedian. 
I'm following your lead here tonight, guys. I'm <laughs> kind of scared. Um, and so, Linda, now that this is approved, tomorrow I'll actually go in and push calculate and it'll set it. Um, and then I'll work with Linda to get tax bills printed um, and they should go out by the end of August. Yep. With the due date being 11 6 20, it's that first Friday. That'd be interesting to see how much this tax rate for the school district went up. If you give me one second, you should know that, right? I should know it, yeah. And I think it was actually by about two or three percent because originally when they came in, it was higher than that, and um, it came back as maybe three percent. I might be missed, but I no, I my feeling was we ought to just go in at the higher rate so because when they came back they started talking about which is in some ways a moot point now because it's not like they've got summer school this year but i said you know i feel like the taxpayers need to decide what they want cut yeah. so the things were cut like um uh the summer program at town school was one of the things that they were cut um they cut some classes at the fa i think they cut the class at the fa you know part of me feels like People make decisions without understanding if they want a lower tax rate, what specifically is going to be cut. Um, so, again, in 2019, the town tax rate was 0. 0.6562. The homestead was 1.5662. The non homestead was 1.7463. Ooh, that's a big jump. And then in 18, the town tax rate was 0 0.6440, homestead 1.5577, non homestead 1.7200. And I think what's going to happen with the school? Um, uh, budget is, I think it's in two years, we're going to see, we're going to lose all our state incentive because we merged the first year we had a 10% or 10 cent cut at 8%, 6%. I think we're down to four next year, we two and after that. So I think things have stayed relatively stable compared to prior to the, the district, but I think clearly we're going to see things go up when that tax incentive is gone, which is, I think, just a year, two years. Any questions? Again, tomorrow, now that I have an approval, I'll, I'll go in and push calculate. It'll set it for the grand list, and then Linda will start to print the bills. Um, and then we'll, we'll get them out for them to be invited. Um, November 6th. Jouer Road. So Jouer Road Temporary Bridge. Um, I was contacted by our district tech, um, Jim Coda. Um, he expressed concern with the Jouer Road culvert. Um, what happens is once FEMA did the site inspection, that all gets uploaded to the grant portal and VTrans has access to it, Vermont Emergency Management has access to it. Uh, and from that posting, I was contacted by Jim, um, who said based on it being a one-way road, he expressed concern um, of it not lasting until the permanent replacement's ready. Um, he wanted me to bring it to the board's attention. Um, what you choose to do is completely up to you. Um, we can either leave it as is and roll the dice and hope that it lasts until the permanent repair is ready, which at a very minimum is July 1st of next year. Um, or we can put in a temporary bridge this year. Uh, VTrans does rent them. Um, the cost will be covered 87.5% by FEMA, um, but, but it still does cost the town some money. Um, so it's really, it's up to you on what you would like to do with it. Um, I think I'd like to hear from Mo before we go making that connection. Yeah, I'd like to take a look at it and hear from Mo yep. before we yep. spend half a million dollars cover a year. Yep. And I, I think it was it was like two hundred thousand.
thousand for five months. Um, if we waited till the last second, you know, brought, you know, which would be like October or end of September, um, or you could even wait even longer and try to slim down on that time, um, or just not do it all together. And um, if if it does get washed out, then we'll deal with it at that time. Um, that's what I was thinking, and that's I'd take a chance and let it go too. Yeah. It's not that, I mean, it's just that lower end. It's, it's the really lower end, not the upper end. It's the lower end, not the upper end, right? Yeah. yeah. Put a difference. I mean, you're going you to shut it, you're going to have to shut it down one way or the other when you put a temporary bridge in it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, if you want to have a conversation with Mole first, I mean, nothing's present. It's, it's not falling in of this as we speak, um, but it, it's in rough shape, and we know it's in rough shape. Luckily, um, it will be included in the November 1st declaration, so we're going to get the permanent replacement funded. Um, but what we do from now up until that time is... Will that be a box culvert deal? It's going to be a bridge. It's, it's not going to be a 45-foot foot span. Yeah. What's the status of that FEMA report? Or? So they're working on it. Um, the way FEMA works is they tell you to never wait. Um, with a project this large, they told me to wait until it goes all the way through their process. Um, it's about three quarters of the way through their process right now. After their process, we'll have to find a design engineer to... Correct. Yep. So they'll give us a scope of work and a dollar amount that they believe it'll cost. Um, we'll then take that scope of work and build it into an RFP and hire a design consultant and then go out to pay for construction. Something ready we'll put together. Yeah. V Trans is current as soon as I knew this was a FEMA declaration, I asked V Trans to add it to her hydraulic list because FEMA wants that hydraulic memo from V or, sorry, yeah, FEMA wants that hydraulic memo from V Trans. Um, their hydraulics department comes out, it's free of charge, but they're about an eight month um, waiting period. So I did ask Jim the other day. Um, it was March sometime when we added it to the list. So he said he was gonna check on it this week and get back to me to see where it is on the list. Um, but basically the river engineer refers to that hydraulic memo of what size structure. They'll recommend a structure um, and then the river engineer will say, I agree with this recommendation, this is what needs to go in. Um, and then for this one, it's probably because of the size, it's probably going to be a U.S. Army Corps and stream alteration. We're like South Road Culvert, it wasn't as big, so it it required stream alteration, but it didn't require an Army Corps permit because it was under 5,000 square yards of fill. Um, this one's probably going to be above that. Sure it will. Um, so, and they they'll all do their 100 foot or their 100 year flood thing, so they'll make it yeah. twice as big as what they can. So what's in there now? Six? Uh, it's a 15 currently. 15? So it'll go from 15 to a 45. They'll triple it? The span, yeah. Typically, when you have a perennial stream, they'll measure bank full width up and down stream in multiple places, then they'll average them, and that's the size structure that they'll recognize. Probably a squash nine foot culvert there right now. Yeah. It's just a, it's yeah. a multi plate culvert. Yeah. But yeah, they we're about three, three quarters of the way through yeah, that, that process. But that's all I have on that one, and I think, yeah, you should go look at it. Um, you know, take a look. We walk down there, and you can see that they call it a backbone or something, where the in, the under part of the culvert pinched up in. Um, and so you can see that there's nothing on the bottom, but it's all it's all right up in there. Lift so, it up to about two feet. Yeah. yeah. But I did mention it to Mo, so he is aware um, of you know Jim's recommendation. He was aware that I was bringing it to you this evening. That's all I have on it. We'll set that back till the next meeting if he's around. Okay. And then we have the appointment of the rec committee members. Yes. So the rec committee held their meeting since the select board, um, I guess, authorized or changed the committees to be five member committees when we were in the select board's terms. Um, so the terms, Charlie is chair. He has a two year ser term serving two years. Um, the vice chair is Damian Boomhauer, uh, three year term serving three years. 
Um, Rebecca is going to be the clerk with three years, three year term serving two years. Um, and then we had two new members express interest in um, joining the committee. Um, at the beginning of the meeting, John Baxter and, oh, you'll have to help me, John. The sorrow. The sorrow. The sorrow gave the resignation from the committee. Um, they said they want to participate, but if that we had new members, that they would offer the resignation to allow new people to um, join the committee. So we did have two people express interest: um, Chad Lacroix and Michelle Desrocher. Desrocher. They're married to each other. I believe so. They are. They are. That's a yes. Yeah, they are. Where do they live? That new house. Um, at the corner of uh, Barry um, Hill and Church, you know the brand, the new one from a couple of years ago. That log cabin, the log cabin just not there. the log cabin in the hole. That's been there for a long time. Across from that, up in the woods, not the one that's not the roses. Not Was the, he not the guy that came in there when they run the? No, cabin. that's Rose. Rose is built between Caldwell and Lacroix and. Um, whatever her name is, DeRose here. So it's right, the very last one, like closest to Don Connor's trailer. Okay. So they, they did both express interest, um, but in order for them to officially be on the committee, um, they need to be appointed to the committee by the select board. Um, and those are the only two that express some interest? That is correct. Yep. So Chad is looking to serve a three-year term, just finishing out one year. And Michelle would serve a two-year term, finishing out one year. So they would both, both essentially be on there for, for one year until town meeting day. What do they have for kids? You know, I know they have one ninth grader. Names aren't familiar, but I'm not. They have one ninth grader. That's all I know because they have a sign at the end of the driveway that says. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I'd say let's point them and see how it works. You haven't got others jumping to. Yeah. No. Get in. That thing seems to go through peaks and valleys. Mm. Second. Yep. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. You done now? I have one thing with executive <laughs> session that I'd like to discuss. Okay. But that's it. So I'm going to go before you do executive session. I have one overweight permit to sign, please. A little bit out of order, but I'll make a motion. We approve the warrant so we get it done. Yep. Second time. Mm -hmm. About the minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll make the same motion, approve the minutes. Any errors, omissions, or comments? None that I could detect. I'll also approve the minutes and the warrants. All right. All right. All right. So the zone planning zone did the same thing. Um, we gave everybody terms. They were all weirded out about it, like I was trying to fire them, it was kind of funny. And then Peter said, like, is anyone dying to replace me? I said, yes, Peter, they're banging down the door. So uh, it stays Harry, Melissa, Demetrius, Aaron, and Peter, and we, you know, messed it up for numbers. Um, Harry's one year left, I'm two years left, Demetrius is three years left, Aaron is one year left, and Peter's two years left. And going forward, these, and you asked that question in an email, these will go, their terms on the specific year will expire at town meeting day. And then that the select board meeting after that is when you would appoint either a new member or if they express interest again. So you need a motion to approve? Yeah, you have to move to approve. I'll make that motion. Second. All of them. <coughs> All right. People are not banging down the door to replace us, I have to say. No. Um, so, so these are appointed terms by the select board versus elected terms. That is correct. correct. Yep. Um, to last meeting, maybe, when I asked you for names of roads two meetings ago, maybe. Yeah. New roads. I made a mistake. Um, we asked you for McKinley Lane, named after um, the guy's granddaughter. Her name's not McKinley, it's Kinley. 
So we would like to change McKinley to Kinley, please. I don't know, we gotta rethink that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you need a motion to change that? No, you just, just have to say it's fine. Sure. Um, I was hoping Mo was going to be here last meeting. I asked him to put a 25 sign out here. He put one on Church Road after he changed the speed. But there's no sign right here. So everyone starts going 50 right here. Oh, on the corner? Oh, yeah, there needs to be one right here. As they turn on the north? Oh, I'm to North Road. Yeah. yeah. And then is there one at the other end of the They're there's, coming in there. Is. There's one coming in. There's been one coming in no, right at Pat's. There's at the end of the, like up by the cemetery, is where there should be one there, right, to come down through yeah. one. Sure. Is there one? Have you I seen it? I haven't been up that way. I mean, I it, should, it goes as far as the cemetery. It's right? supposed to change at the cemetery, and, and I There's don't, nothing there. I didn't look. There's nothing by the cemetery. All right, so there's two that need to go up then here. And by the cemetery coming into the on church, yeah, on church, yeah. wherever the district stops. I think okay. it's right by the cemetery. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hold on. Um, so one of the exercises that I do in drive rent um, is have them create a story about a safe. A problem with safety that they experience every day on their way to school and Hannah Brannon chose the corner of Chester Arthur and the North Road because that light is never functional. What is on, that light supposed to do? What, it is, what is actually, that? that's, I wanted to ask that. What is that light supposed to do? The light is supposed to flash when there is a vehicle coming off of Chester Arthur, Chester Arthur Road. So on Saturday so it's also supposed to flash when someone's coming up when over there. Someone gets by or... Joan Bernor's house driveway. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to flash down below. That the so I, coming. So I called the company. I went and looked in the back of it. Saw who made it. Called them. Um, said we have a problem with it. It's flashing consistently. It's not supposed to do this. Um, their first offering was four thousand dollars to fly a tech out to take a look at it. I said, is there another option? This was just installed in 2018. It shouldn't be broken. Never worked. It's never worked. Never worked. Um, so they gave me a phone number. They said it would be cheaper to have one of your highway department members go look at it, call the number that we gave you, and I'll walk them through troubleshooting. Um, if they get to a spot where it, it's under warranty, then we'll send you a part. Um, so was that original planning and put that together? And put it it was. It was a, it was a, um, so there's nothing that falls back on a that. dangerous intersection uh, grant of some variety. Right. And you should be aware of this malfunction of this equipment since it was installed. I, I know what they are. It's it's something we, we, it's something it was brought up once before at the meeting. Oh, okay. we brought it up a lot of times. Yeah. yeah. Lafayette, by the way, has repaired it previously, I think. Okay. Um, That's good. Double know. check with Amanda, but I'm pretty sure it's Lafayette that came out to repair it. Okay. Does anyone else remember that? I, I, somebody worked on it, and then they didn't fly a man, so. Right. And it's never worked since it's... It's never worked. One. It's okay. never worked properly. Well, properly. It's it's worked for a while, properly. and it don't work. Yeah. It's almost more dangerous having it there. Right. Yeah. Especially in the winter, because if you're relying that no one's coming, and you, yeah. have, and you I mean, try and get up that road... I mean, I guess, does it make sense, instead of getting it to only flash when someone's there, does it make sense to just have a dangerous intersection sign? Did not have any flashing things, just get a sign that says dangerous intersection and then people can slow down on their own. Well, but they don't. Yeah, but the, they don't. So, I mean, really, I mean, not at the end of the Cook Road, um, it works. Russell and Cook, it works. Yeah, it works all the time. It works all the time. There's and that's how it should work. It's the exact same thing, and there's no, like, I don't trust it personally mm -hmm. just because I'm weird, mm -hmm. but it's never let me down. Okay. And I, so, so you don't trust Cook Road is one light, and this one yeah. is two. Cook, Cook is a one way, one sensor, one light. No, it's Russell Road, isn't it? Yeah, it Russell, 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 uh, Russell, Russell, Russell Road. Russell Road to yeah. Woods Hill. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I guess I, mean, I can reach out to the Regional Planning Commission and let them know as well. If it was an RPC grant, they should be aware that we're having problems with it. You're right, um, the equipment isn't particularly, yeah. and it's bothered since day one. Yeah, and it has never worked properly. And I'll reach out to Lafayette too and see if that's I'm pretty sure do. that's what was left us in the okay. picture, but. Even if it just flashes when someone's coming over by Jones, it's pretty dangerous because the way you have to pull up, especially in the winter, there's a huge blind spot to your left. 
you you have to like triple check and then make sure and it's always kind of a crap shoot in the winter. <laughs> you know, if well, it's like exactly it used to be a dead elm tree there. I'd aim for that first and then make a sharp left. And it's, that way there you were up around. It's especially hard for the milk trucks coming out of magnets. Yeah. You know, because if they slow down and stop, they don't have time to get going. Well, remember when they first started, they wanted us to make it a stop. We said, no way in hell. Not, not it's a, a yield. A stop with coming off at Chester Arthur. Yeah, yeah. the milk trucks would stop. never make it. And you're far better off to go rolling through it. Yeah. And then you can punch it and make a left-hand turn. Yeah, yeah. the milk trucks would never make it. Yeah, I mean, they're 35 you know. They're long, so. Yeah, you come over that hill with an end of trucks going out, you're in trouble. Um, okay, the last thing is we have, um, we're going to have on August 31st, there's going to be a public presentation of the town plan um, at 7 o'clock, virtual, of course. Um, this is a public hearing? Yeah. Okay. We're having a couple of them, so this is the planning. This is the, first this one. Is the planning commission's public hearing. Yeah. So the select board also is going to have to hold a public hearing once yeah, we'll this just, makes its way. Yeah, through. we'll just do it before um, a meeting, a regular meeting yeah. at some point, because yeah. we have not had any interest at all. Well, COVID kind of. But we're kind just yeah. ready to start. It's perfect excuse. Everything. Materials don't show. <laughs> COVID could get it. COVID, yeah. yeah. If I didn't show up, kind of possible COVID. You know. um, there is a, a movement. We had a discussion the other day about um, in the bylaw we changed. You remember when we did the bylaws? We changed the 200 foot requirement to be on a town maintained road. Yeah. And we have always allowed people to um, like borrow frontage from another part of their property like from an adjacent property, well, it used to be from anywhere in town, but like if your piece of property doesn't have frontage, you can have, I'll give you an example. Carissa Yates is building a house up beside Steve, and she's only got an acre and a half or something, or two. And so it doesn't include any frontage. So the farm is going to deed 200 feet of frontage for her property. And we've always allowed that. The concern from the committee was, everyone who's lived here forever knows that, knows that it's a possibility that you can deed frontage from another place to your place, but no one else knows it. So they would like it to be specifically included that you can have deeded frontage from another property fulfill that requirement of 200 feet. Mm -hmm. So that means to include it. Only 50 feet in front of John O'Brien Road, and I wanted to build a house. I could take 100 and 200 feet from the Duffy Hill and apply it to the Ryan Road. And then that frontage would no longer be available to develop on Duffy Hill. Okay. But not everyone knows that. So it's the, the concern was it's sort of elitist. You know, not everyone knows that's a possibility. So they would like it expressly included. And that will require an amendment to the bylaws. So you need to approve or... I thought one time we were going to eliminate the 200 feet. Huh? Well, we eliminated that it was on a town-maintained road. Oh, okay. So that means that if somebody is creating a development, they can create their own road. Yeah. It's still the goal is to avoid those spaghetti lots. You know, but now if you know you can create your own frontage, and it can also be not on the town maintained road. So, do you, does anyone object to that? Are you okay with that? I don't have a problem with it. You? This just makes it more equitable. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Good. Do you want to move it? Somebody. I'll make a motion we proceed in the manner you just described. Thank you. Plan. It asks, doesn't ask to be the same landowner, right? Or not necessarily. Same, same what? Landowner. We have said it has to be from a contiguous property because we had it years ago where it would be this property over here and five miles or six wow. miles on the other side of town. So we've, we've said that it needs to be contiguous yeah. on an adjoining property. 
So my my example wouldn't work in this scenario. No, it needs to be contiguous. Attached to the same. Yeah. And not parcel. Second, anyone? I second. All good. All in favor. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's all I have. That's my list. Hmm. Now executive session. Okay. Here we go. So I make a motion to adjourn. Got it. That's it.